Hello, today we're going to be talking about showing up online without showing your face, which is not something I usually do. But, um, what did I say in my last video? Something about showing your face. Oh yes, we were talking about how to show Etsy and our customers um, that we are a handmade shop. Basically another way of standing out from the mass-produced rubbish out there. Um, and one of the ways that I suggested was showing your face. Now being visible online isn't a new uh, piece of advice, people have been saying that for ages. Showing your face is definitely a good way of connecting with people because we are hardwired as humans to look for humanity and connection and faces are probably the easiest way to do that. And it's also why we, um, we instinctively look for people's eyes, it's why when making videos I have to look into the lens and not in at the screen. There's my face, I'm currently looking at my face but I'm not looking at you so I need to look at the lens and ignore all of the hand waving that I can see out of the corner of my eye. I digress. It's also why we see um, faces in inanimate 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 objects we're just hardwired we're hardwired that way to to look for humanity to look for faces to look for connection and that is why this advice of be visible show your face um is is just it won't go away and it's not going to go away because it's true it works just because we don't all like it doesn't mean it's not true i'm afraid i'm sorry however what was brought up in the comment section of my last video was a very valid point. There are people who can't show up publicly, visibly online for security reasons. Um, now I'm not going to focus on that, but what I did like from this conversation that happened and what I think does need to be talked about more is just people who don't want to. For whatever reason, if someone feels uncomfortable showing up online and their reason for not showing up online is simply, I don't want to. That is a reason. That feeling, that decision is perfectly valid all by itself. The point I'm trying to make is that we don't need some big dramatic reason to justify why we don't want to show up online. Of, I'm not saying that people don't have big dramatic reasons, I'm just saying we don't need it. Just not wanting to is reason enough. So today we are focusing on anyone who, for whatever reason, wants to promote their business online, but without doing this. Yeah, as you can see, I don't have a problem with that. But you would be surprised. I do enjoy making videos. I don't have a problem showing my face now. I certainly used to, but that doesn't mean that there aren't days when I wish just posting a picture of my products would have the same level of reach and engagement as a video with or something with my face in it. It, it would be nice. Um, and I'm saying this because I just want people to remember that when people like me come online and we say you need to show your face or if you want to get better outreach then you need to be more visible. We're not making the rules. We are merely the messengers because this is people's behaviour online. I mean, look, <laughs> you're watching me right now because I'm showing my face in a video and the video that other people were commenting on last week, that was a video they found online, my face. If I had put that in a blog post, if I had just made a standalone image post on social media, chances are the majority of you would not have found that. I'm just saying that so that you, you understand that there's no gatekeepers making these rules up and just waking up in the morning and thinking, you know what? Let's make this rule that everybody has to show their face. That sounds like a good one. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> if I had, if there was any, if any, if any, if anyone online, if anyone online had such power, then I would be making up rules like, um, bringing back the good old days of Instagram. Hmm. Oh, I miss those. Do you remember those? And the filters. Oh, those filters had such a chokehold on me. I mean, everything just looked so sepia. So, oh, I'm digressing again. Let's let's bring it back. Wow, I am I am chatty and garbled today. I've also forgotten to do the intro. Oh, bloody hell. I'm Kim. This is the Coffee and Craft podcast. These are longer, chattier videos so that you can watch or listen while you are working. There we go. <laughs> Nearly eight minutes of filming. Oh my gosh, obviously it'll be less than that when I've finished editing, but um, eight minutes before I got to the intro, that was personal best for me. Basically, 
all of that that I have just said, I just wanted to lay the groundwork as to why this piece of advice will not die, why it just keeps on cropping up over and over again. It's because um, showing your face is the easiest and most effective way to show the person behind the business and to help people connect with you. However, it is not the only way. And good news, folks, guys, gals, theys, good news. Um, we are a creative bunch, so we can get really creative with how we show up online without showing our mugs. I don't know what I'm doing now. <laughs> I have had quite a few cups of coffee, so you, mm -hmm. I woke up at three o'clock last night and I could not get back to sleep, so I need it. Digressing again. I need to bring out like some sort of merch line with um, I digress. <laughs> with I digress or let's digress or just some <laughs> I digressing oh my days right you don't need to show your face to inject uh, your personality or um, a bit of humanity into your shop or your business and to show both Etsy and your customers that you are a handmade small business um, I have seen people saying People don't expect this of larger businesses, um, like, I was gonna say Walmart. We don't have Walmart here in the UK. Tesco, I don't know. Um, but that's because they're a big corporation. They're a big business. Of course it's going to be faceless. That's why nobody expects it of bigger businesses. That's not like for like, that's apples and cars. Um, small businesses, the advantage we have is that it is just us. But the trouble is, if we're gonna take Etsy as an example, there are so many scammers out there now pretending to be small businesses, pretending to be handmade, pretending to be artisan, when in fact they're drop shippers and the stuff is mass produced and probably in very questionable ways. <coughs> Child labor. So it matters. It's not just a case of getting yourself seen, it's a case of proving to Etsy that you are a handmade business, especially as they have said that they are doing things to try and weed out the scammers, which let's be honest, could mean that genuine people get caught up in their nets. So we do have to do something to try and say, we're legit, we're handmade, leave us alone. Mm -mm -mm. Now, um, showing your face is just one, one example that you can do that, but one of many. I have got some pictures in my about section on Etsy. And it is me, but you can't see my face and I'm stitching. Um, now I'm, I'll, I'll put the pictures here so that you can see them, or at least one of them anyway. Now to be fair, this might still be more than some people are comfortable with. I'm only showing you this as an example of how you can take a picture of yourself if you feel comfortable doing so, but still without showing your face. Pushing that to one side for a moment, um, you don't even have to do that. You don't have to get your face, your profile, or any of it in at all. Hands. Because people do not like the thought of getting in pictures at all, I know I'm gonna get pushed back with hands as well, but hear me out. If there was anything on your hand that you were afraid would put people off or identify you, you can remove it. For example, if you have a tattoo you don't want people to see, a scar you don't want people to see, there are apps that you can use to remove those. Um, I use an app called, what is it called? Retouch, I think. And um, I use that mostly to remove um, marks on the backdrop that I use for my pictures. Stay there. Don't move. This is my backdrop. It's the lid to our shoebox and <laughs> it lives out there in the hallway. <laughs> and um, it's, you can't see it. My husband did a, a second coat of paint and he, he, he botched it. Sorry darling, I love you dearly, but you botched that. <laughs> and sometimes I have to remove the botches and I use um, the retouch app. There are many others, but that's just an example. If you were worried about anything, you can, you can tweak it with the power of editing. But hands are a, a really important tool because um, let's do an example, shall we? On my windowsill, I have this little mouse. See, so pretty. Um, now let's imagine that I just take a picture of the mouse. In fact, I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take my phone. 
I'm gonna do it right now while I'm chatting because why not? So, and I will, I will put the picture next to me so you can see it. So we've got the picture of my little mouse. <laughs> okay, that's the picture that I've just taken. I'm gonna take the same one. There you go, and this is the picture with my hand. Which one suggests a person behind the business, adds humanity, etc. There are other ways as well. You can show um, sort of little process snippets of you working. Now, I'm gonna, I, I can't mention process shots or process videos without bringing this up because every single time I get pushback from people saying, I don't want to share my process because I don't want to give away how I make my items, otherwise people will copy. And that always blows my mind because who on earth is saying that you should share the entire process? Because I don't know about you, my process is quite lengthy. The only time the full process would need to be included in a video, be it a lengthy one or a shorter one, is if you are showing someone how to do something. Um, an example of this would be a video for how to use a stick and stitch patch, which I have on my listings in my Etsy shop. Um, I I have these because the customers are buying a product that they are going to use and it shows them how to use it, common sense. However, I wouldn't do the same for something that I make. <laughs> and no one is suggesting that you do either. So when I talk about um, taking process shots or process videos, I'm talking about a snapshot of one part that does not show anybody how to do something, but it shows you making it. And I do think there's a bit of a knee-jerk reaction there from people who are saying, oh, I'm not doing that, I'm not showing people my process. It's like, calm, calm, it's okay. <laughs> no one's asking you to share the whole thing. But for example, um, with my project bags. I might show a quick video of me using the sewing machine. That does not t tell anyone anything about how to make the project bag, although people could find out if they wanted to, let's be honest, uh, I don't own project bags. It's your style that people can't replicate and I think some people need to be more confident in that and um, just not hold on so tightly. You just, you need to give a little. And it, and before anybody warms up their fingers and gets in my comments, when I say give a little, I'm not talking about your secrets, you know, the things that, you know, you, you that do make you stand out from other people, the things that make you unique, but the standard things, like um, if you hand stitch leather wallets, you can show a couple of seconds in a video of you stitching a leather wallet followed by the finished wallet. There's a whole lot of work in there before the stitching and after um, that you're not giving away and it's just a snippet. I can, I've watched people show a whole process video and I still couldn't replicate what they did afterwards because it's just not that easy. There's skill involved, there's knowledge, there's experience of having done the thing over and over and over. Trust that. But as I say, you don't have to show the whole process. You don't even have to share one step of the process. We're talking about a few seconds of one part. And uh, when we're talking about videos, you also get to edit it the way you want to, so you have full control. Another thing, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I get pushed back on this as well, but sharing your workspace. Oh, right. Let's go there, shall we? Um, I hear people going, oh, I can't share my workspace, it's too messy. Right. If only there was a solution to that. Then tidy it for a photo, love. Our approach to this entire subject can be summed up with two simple words, creativity and common sense. <laughs> because um, I think the problem for a lot of people is the fact that they don't want to make video content because it usually comes back to that. Yes, we don't want to show our faces, many of us do in certain cases, and again, I am not here to change your mind on that. Um, I, as I said at the beginning of this video, if you just don't want to show your face, that's reason enough. You do not have to justify it. You stick a full stop at the end. I don't want to show my face, full stop. That's valid. And also, I do appreciate that not everybody, in fact, a lot of people, don't have a desire to make videos because there's just no, it's not fun. 
th there's just the idea of making a video just sounds so boring and like oh god another skill to learn um what if I told you that it's really not that time consuming? If we're talking about small videos, it's it's really just as quick as just sort of picking up your phone, taking a little video of something. It could be your product, like, hey, I'm gonna take a video of my coffee and stop, job done. And then you can just add some background music to it and hey presto, you've just made yourself a video. Sometimes these are the things that we have at our disposal to show our customers that we're real. And I will say this one more thing, one more thing. Um, if you're worried about the quality of it, don't. Because sometimes the scrappy quality or just it not being too polished is what helps us stand out. Because people do not expect small businesses to have the magazine quality or the production quality of um, something that would be made by a bigger corporation. You would expect it of them. They have teams, they have uh, budgets, and, and you just expect it to be more polished and finished and, and professional, whatever the heck that means. But for us, we're kind of bootstrapping everything. We, we, we have so many hats to wear as a, as a small business. Nobody expects it to be BBC quality. And thank God for that. <laughs> I mean... I think I've been blurry for half of this video, so <laughs> apologies for that if I have been. The reason why I keep saying to people that you need to be visible online in some way, shape or form, not forget, don't shout at me, this is not me saying that you need to show your face because again, I hope this video has shown you that you don't, but you, you do need to be visible in the sense that you have to just find a way that you're comfortable with to let people know that there is a person behind these products that there is a connection to you, the seller, and the products. Because in this day and age, there's there's no connection. If you were to ask a lot of the sellers on Etsy to even just share a picture of them holding the product, they wouldn't be able to because the product is in another country in someone's factory. Do you see what I mean? We just need to think, right, how can I show that I made this without showing my face? And this is where the creativity comes in because there's so many ways. The reason why people like me just keep on saying show your face is just because it's the easiest way, but it's not the only way. That's the good news, so let's embrace that. So it wouldn't really be a good video about showing up online and not showing your face if I didn't at least give you some examples, but I'm kind of coming at this from the point of view of a handmade seller who makes finished products. So some of these will apply, some of these won't, um, depending on what you do. Now this is one that I'm gonna be it, what's the word, experimenting with on my other YouTube channel soon. And that is taking B-roll footage where I'm not in it and then filming a voiceover. That just appeals to me. It's just something I want to experiment with and try. So I myself have got plans of doing a faceless video uh, just because I want to mix it up. I do a lot of um, talking head videos and I, I want to try something new. So that's that's one thing that you can do. And you can do that for short form as well. You can do that for a reel or a YouTube short or a TikTok or wherever it is that you are at, you can, you can do the same thing. If you don't want to have your voice in the video, there are apps for that now too. It's brilliant. Um, some are better than others. I haven't really done much uh, research into it, so I can't, I haven't got any to tell you about but do do some research if this is interest it is of interest to you good grief we're gonna have to wrap up soon because words are getting difficult <laughs> voice to no text to voice text to speech apps so that you can actually write out what you want to say and someone else's voice will say it for you I mean isn't that very clever so you don't have to be in the video and you don't have to have your your voice saying anything so you can you can play in the sandpit on your own terms. I think that's really exciting. So that's that's one way. Um, an obvious one for some of us is gonna be the good old, t t oh, I can't say it ever. <laughs> DIY, t tutorial, tutorial, tutorial. That video. <laughs> You know, like the flat lay where you're you're taking it from above and you can get your hands in there. This is really good if you have a product uh, where you want to show the customer how to use the product. 
so it's not a case of giving away your secret sauce again before anybody warms up their fingers. I have a few on my other channel for the kits that I sell and I think I've done a talking head intro and stuff because <laughs> of course but most of it is just very 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 questionable uh, footage of me stitching. I say questionable because I don't have the right setup and some of it's a bit blurry. <laughs> don't go looking for it but or maybe do because it will show you that um it, it works even though it's not high quality it works there you go i'm i'm evidence of that um my channel if anybody's interested i'll stick it in the uh, description it's beech tree handmade simples it's my it's my for funs channel <laughs> It's where I go to experiment and just do things and just show people the things that I've made because I'm a sad little muppet that likes to go, look! <laughs> anyway, where was I? I'm, I'm digressing again. Um, if, you, if you make certain products, you could even uh, play with animations or uh, like stop-go motion. That's an idea is what I'm trying to say. And if you are an artist and you do sort of uh, graphic art or what have you, um, you could even maybe make little animations for social media because that they're quite shareable and what have you and can help you get out there to the masses. The stuff that I do on social media, for example, tends to be the more behind the scenes stuff. So I sort of show people my day as I'm working. Now again, I just rock up as is because I have no shame. But you could do it too simply from just turning the camera to facing you to facing the other way. So instead of me doing a video on like, hi, it's morning, here's my coffee, I'm about to go into the office and start working at my computer. I could just flip the camera around and you could just see my hand holding the, the coffee and me going, hi, it's me, obviously. I'm here, we're gonna go into my office. You might see the door opening with my other hand and you know, the movement going into the office, very first hand point of view. It, it can be as simple as that. It doesn't have to be complicated. And if you make a video without any talking on it whatsoever, you can add um, trending audio on social media. And sometimes that will help you take off and get seen by other people just from choosing the right audio at the right time. There, There's a multitude of ways that you can show the humanity and the personality and, and the person the person <laughs> behind your business without showing your face. The only thing that you might find about not sharing your face is that sometimes growth can be slower. But what I would personally say to that is that if we're talking about social media and, and stuff like YouTube channels and stuff, they're vanity metrics. I really wouldn't worry about slow growth. In fact, slow growth itself, that very term, still suggests growth which is a good thing. You, there is no rule that you have to go Whoa! So as if you're getting some kind of growth, and I would focus more on the engagement that you're getting, are people engaging with your posts, your work, and are people purchasing from you? Because if you're in business, uh, it feels uncomfortable to say sometimes, but th that's kind of what matters. <laughs> You have to pay the bills, right? That's why we're we're in business. Um, I know I have to pay bills anyway, as much as I'd like not to. <laughs> but yes, as long as people are finding you and connecting with you and purchasing from you, then you know that your marketing efforts are working. Over to you. Has this lit a spark in you in any way, shape or form? Have you got any ideas for content, preferably video, just because it seems to be king at the moment, that you can make to showcase your work your items, your art, without showing your wonderful face. Because you have wonderful ideas and wonderful hands and there are a multitude of ways that you can do that without without getting, you know, all of this in it. If you've got any ideas that I haven't mentioned for others, stick them in the comments because people do read the comments and you might be in a different niche to me and you might have other ideas of how this could apply to you and I just think that we need to keep this conversation going because those of us that don't want to show our faces need ideas, we need inspiration and um, yeah, let's, let's just keep the topic going, shall we? As always, take what serves you, leave the rest, be kind, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.